All right, everybody, I am going to show you guys today a very quick five minute video surrounding where you could figure out how to become a validator in one in a one stop shop website that actually shows you what you'll need, how to do it before to start what you need during the setup and after depositing. So let's get started. So you have the recommendation disclaimer here highlighting basically that hardware suggestions are constantly evolving and with technological innovations in blockchain, specifically since we're, we're, we're a fork of Ethereum 2.0, you have to be ready for sharding. And for anybody who doesn't know what sharding is, it's basically partitioning a blockchain into multiple subsets so that <clears throat> the load of transactions are not just technically on Ethereum full nodes. It basically is, it basically assists in lack of a better word with, with scalability. So that's the first thing. So you're going to need this type of hard drive here. You're going to be able, you're going to need one terabyte for the mainnet execution chain growing, <coughs> growing with the one gigabyte per day. Pulse chain fork with all of the Ethereum system states. So in addition, it is growing in size over time and the introduction of sharding will also increase storage, memory, and bandwidth requirements. Now, when will sharding occur? I don't know. The, the, the speculation, I, I don't even want to give you guys a time. So I just don't know. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a specific CPU to check with client document, doc, documentation to ensure the hardware you want to use is sufficient and supported. Resource usage can vary significantly between clients. You're going to need, obviously, an internet connection. You don't have an internet connection. How in God's name are you going to do this? So you're going to need very reliable and as close to 24-7 as possible without interruption. I repeat, if you are going to be a validator and you have, and you're in an area that goes, that loses internet connection every now and then, it's probably not recommended to be a validator. Like, for example, for me, I live in an area that sometimes the internet goes out arbitrarily so so for me it's not the best case scenario to be a validator even though it's not very frequent this happens i'm not going to run a validator as a result of this alone so ensure your bandwidth can't be throttled and isn't capped so your node stays in sync and will be ready to validate when called you need enough upload bandwidth as well so this is what you're going to need and this is from last year mind you so this is all subject to change it says here it's likely to increase this is all subject to change Avoid overly complicated setups and be aware of trade-offs. Being offline for brief periods of time will result in small inactivity penalties, but will be recoupled easily after being online again for about the same amount of time. So make sure, and many validators have this in, in multiple layer one changes, they have something called slashing. So you have to be online frequently. And if you intend on being a nefarious validator, well, you know, this, the, the don't, I would say one of the major beneficial things about slashing is that if you're a nefarious actor and you're a nefarious validator, it's very easy for, for you to lose your principle and it's very easy to lose what you've gained doing this. So make sure to try not to be offline for an extended period of time. So I just want to make that abundantly clear. So we have more on the slashing risks here. So during setup, you're going to need your chosen hardware and operating system Use dedicated hardware to run your clients, reduces risk of malware exposure, and minimizes competition for computing resources. After that, make sure, guys, you have a risk of, you, you have hardware that is efficient and secure. Because if Pulse Chain is mass adopted, there's going to be individuals out there that are going to most likely try to target validators. And you don't want to accidentally install or have malware. And that destroy and that, and that destroys your ability to be a validator, or it impedes it, and it creates and it creates all loads of problems you don't want to have. So then you have node security here. I would definitely have a firewall up. I would definitely have that. I think that's crucial. I think it's also crucial to have um, something like Avast or something like that, just to make sure that your computer is clean. For example, you you don't want to have a computer that is prone to malware and nefarious activity as a simple result of a lack of security. So you have to configure the time sync as well. So this is out of my expertise. So I'm just going to, you know, this is not something I'm, I'm well adept in. This is also why I'm not running a validator personally. This is what you're going to need to do. So you're going to have to run this following command. We strongly recommend you complete these steps on the current test net before you, obviously. So 
If you're going to be a validator, I highly recommend that you guys check out the Testnet V3. And I have a video on the Testnet V3 and how to connect to MetaMask and how to put your PulseX contract addresses and stuff like that. I'm not going to make a video, most likely, on the intricacies of Testnet. Um, I think that would be better suited for somebody else to do. But I just wanted to highlight that. So then you have configuring your execution client, the validator roles and responsibilities. So you can configure for Go Pulse or Aragon Pulse. These are the things. So you have these clients that exist that you're going to need to connect to. And all stakers must operate an execution client with their consensus client. So you have to check these off. Then you would configure your consensus client. So you've seen all of these highlighted from Richard Hart a few days, the last couple of weeks, like Go Ethereum, Aragon, Prism, Lighthouse. Like we've seen these. And this is why. So you have to configure your consensus client. And this is a node setup tutorial. Warning, it is a high risk to run your validator in multiple places. It will lead to a slashable event and ejection from the network. So make sure to have the latest stable software release of the consensus client. Then you have the JWT authentication. Again, this is not something that I'm well adept in, I will say with, with humility. So we have this, so I would read these documents as well. And again, I'm going to put this website right here in the description so you guys can just come here. I'm just showing you guys, I'm just reading this along for you guys. Um, set fee recipient, then you have the consensus layer beacon node, consensus layer validator client, and then after depositing, protecting your funds using monitoring software and learn how to handle different real world scenarios. So these steps are optional, but are recommended to optimize your node. If you guys are uh, if you guys are running a node, you guys really need to have, and I'm sure many people who are running a node should, should know this, should have um, the best of the best surrounding, excuse me, surrounding programs that protect your computer from malware, from spyware, from nefarious activities. You need to have these. You need to have monitoring software. If you don't, things can happen that are not going to be pretty. So these are the monitoring docs. You have the testnet simulations. Definitely, like they said, highlight testnet. Use the testnet if you're going to run a validator once mainnet launches. Advanced system architecture. Then you have graffiti. And then you have the dev telegram. So I just wanted to make a quick video highlighting this. I know some of you may not be may not be able to find this. Um, you could find the dev telegram. I'll put the dev telegram in the description as well. Um, if you have any questions, go into the dev telegram. This is something that's not really in my expertise. Um, I just want to share this with people because I know this is being shared on Twitter, but not to as much as my liking. So I am going to put this on YouTube. And if you guys have any questions, join the Pulse Chain dev telegram. So thank you.